What we've made is a nanoparticle-based vaccine. Nanoparticle vaccines we found have improved immune responses, and one reason we think it does that is because it actually looks like a virus. Hi, I'm Brooke Viala, and I work at the Institute for Protein Design. I'm a research scientist here at University of Washington in the School of Medicine. So we took um, a very small piece of a protein uh, from coronavirus, and we've decorated our nanoparticles with that. When we gave this nanoparticle vaccine to mice, we saw a dramatic increase in antibody production. The ability of the mouse blood to neutralize the virus was substantially greater with the nanoparticle-based vaccines. I've been working on coronaviruses for the past five years, and until earlier this year, no one else really seemed to know or care much about them, um, but obviously that's all changed. I am Lexi Walls, and I am a scientist in David Wiesler's laboratory in the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Washington. We used kind of the base of knowledge that we've been gaining over the last five years in the Wiesler lab to, you know, pick which constructs we could use and pick what type of vaccine we wanted to test and how we wanted to test that. A lot of the other vaccine trials are using the entire spike protein. Um, we decided just to use one specific piece of the spike protein to really focus the immune response. So we wanted to train our immune system on just this piece to have the strongest response possible. And not only that, but we also displayed it on a next generation nanoparticle to boost um, your immune response even more. We've actually used this highly engineered system before for other coronaviruses prior to 2020. Um, and so that really got us the information and the knowledge necessary to move and move with this as fast as possible. One of the main things that we wanted to see was how putting these pieces on the nanoparticle would enhance either the immune response or our ability to really scale back the vaccine for, you know, it's called dose sparing so that we can give smaller amounts to more people and therefore get more people vaccinated fat quickly. Um, and so we really wanted to compare head to head uh, just the RBD alone, so just that portion of the spike protein, the spike protein alone, and the RBD on the nanoparticle. And not only did we want to compare those, we also wanted to compare them to samples from patients who had actually been infected with COVID and to see, you know, was our vaccine actually producing a better response than people with a natural infection. A lot of this work has been characterizing first in the test tube and then in mice, and we've seen amazing results in mice. And so we've even moved into non-human primates and we're still seeing just incredible results. So we're really excited to see where this goes. Putting the RBD onto a nanoparticle both gave a stronger response than was seen with patients who were naturally infected and allowed us to really spare dosage um, compared to just the individual constructs alone, not multimerized on this large nanoparticle. So um, really, everything worked as we kind of dreamed. <laughs> In another experiment, we actually tested whether our vaccinated mice um, could survive uh, a COVID-19-like infection. And what we saw with our nanoparticle was that it was fully protective in all of the mice, which was really, really exciting. I have never, ever worked at this fast a pace, and I think everyone on the team can equally say that. You know, we we're having Zoom meetings twice a week. We were up late, up early, you know, just constantly pushing because for one of the first times, our work has direct outcomes that could really help others. And so that's motivating, but also humbling. This will not be the last pandemic. Uh, I can tell you that with certainty, whether it will be a coronavirus, whether it will be another family of viruses that we know have pandemic potential, I can't predict that. Um, but what I can say is that this will unfortunately not be the last. And so pushes like these to make vaccine platforms like our nanoparticle will only serve to benefit us in the future.